Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is brought to you by Tasty Minstrel Games, and it's called Guagong, the Forbidden City in China. Uh, in Guagong, you're simply going to be trying to gather favor, reaching the Emperor, and doing all these great things to gather victory points. And if you can do so, you're going to win the game after four rounds. You're going to have cards in your hand that you're going to utilize as a worker placement style game, switching cards from your hand to the board to be able to do different effects. Sometimes it'll be higher or lower, and that will change how you're in what you're going to be doing in your turn and additionally not only that but there's different places on the board and they all do different things and they function differently but the end goal is the same gathering points but you're not going to just gather points because you also have to gather uh, uh you're you have to get down to the emperor if you don't make it to the emperor he's basically not going to recognize you and you're not going to get it doesn't matter how many points you get you're still not going to win the game so there's certain steps that you have to basically proceed to in order for the game to work out in your favor anyway it's the basic idea of the game it's gorgeous let's go ahead and show you down below all the stuff i'll explain it all i'll give you a bit of a run through as to how it kind of works and then we'll come up and we'll talk about it so here we have the game Gulgong and everything included there's a bunch as you can see we're going to go over it as best i can as well as explaining how turns work and whatnot you also get this fully in-depth rule book which explains the game does pretty well pretty good job of it and it comes with uh fully colored pictures and images this is the box of course it is nice and sturdy so let's go ahead and get into it now this board here first of all has two sides for it has for two to three, two to three player, one to three players on this side, and then it has the four and five player variant on the other side. So in this case, we're not going to actually need the uh, the orange and the white. So I'll go ahead and move these guys off of the board. But just so you get an idea, there is additional players in the game. Uh, these are also not going to be needed now because I went ahead and done the setup. But in general, to set the game up, put the points over there. Uh, there's going to be seven cards that have the uh, that have no colored in fan symbols on the top right hand side. Go ahead and put those randomly in each of these seven spaces. And then with these, there's going to be paint symbols, which have one, two, and three. And it'll tell you where they're going to go. This is the three. This is the two. This is the one. Shuffle them up and deal them out randomly according to uh, their paint numbers. And then set the rest aside. This will change the uh, way the game works every single time. In addition to that, you're also going to have these little influence uh, markers here that you're going to put it, uh, based on the ascending turn order. So whoever goes first is going to be at the bottom. The person in front or on top is going to be the person that is ahead. And in this marker, it wins ties. There's also the first player, um, gaining the first player marker marker that's placed right here. This is a secondary uh, deck of cards that you're going to be uh, passing out to every player. If you're playing a two-player game, you'll deal out the symbols for the one fan and then the symbols for the two fan for each player. So in which case, each player is going to get four cards, and it'll tell you the top uh, right-hand side. Probably hard to see on the camera, but there's four cards for each player to start the game with, and you can gain more because there's also an additional deck here of cards that you can uh, obtain via this, which I'll explain later. Uh, over here, there's going to be jade stocks. It's going to be, uh, you're going to put two in the two area, three in, two in the three, uh, two in the four, and then the rest are going to go in this five spot area. And um, uh, the last but not least is you're going to take all of these little tokens here, these little egg-shaped things, and you're going to randomly distribute them on the board and put the rest of them in these areas here, which can be basically filled in as the phases of the game continue. You're each going to also get these little uh, men on horsemen, horseback, that are going to be placed off of the board, and they're going to go on the board wherever you want them to go. There's additionally the round marker, which starts at round one, which signifies that you're going to get six units to start, and uh, three dice, which you'll be rolling at the beginning of the game to determine the, the cards and their values that you want in your hand at the end of the round. Every single player is going to get uh, six of these workers, and you're going to set the rest off of, of your board, and they're all going to go in there. Um, and this is basically going to explain how the game goes along with uh, what you can gain, whether it be points, additional cards in your hand, uh, aka additional workers and worker placement, as well as a double piece, which is basically considered a double worker that you can utilize throughout the game. It tells you the end of game scoring and how that works. It gives you a discard pile. And up here is as you gain these tiles here, they're going to go in these slots, which as you obtain them, you can go ahead and discard them for their value. If you have six, you can get a jade. If you have four, you can get two points. If you have two, you can get one. One singular worker. 
And that's basically how it starts. Now, when you have your hand of cards, depending on the player that you are, you're then on your turn going to be able to uh, select one of these spaces and switch a card out. So we'll begin with the first phase of the game, which I'll explain. The first one is whoever has this token is going to be the first player. And if no one has received this token the last round, the person who was previously first will still be first. Go ahead and take these tokens and place them on the board if any of the spots need to be filled up. You're going to then roll the dice, which will then signify what card you want to have in your hand at the end of the round. This is going to signify any abilities that you have acquired. Uh, these take place instantly. And then over here is how many workers you get, and depending on the round, which is one, two, three, and four of the rounds, there's six workers, four, four, and four workers that you basically get from your supply into your pool. Then this whole phase here is placing cards from your hand. So for instance, I have a two, four, a five, and a nine. And there's two types of placement, basically. There's placing lower or equal to, and then there's placing higher than. When you place higher than, so for instance, if I were to place this two on this one, I'm then going to get to do the action for the card I placed along with one of the two actions from uh, the space below. And each of these spaces has their own things they need to do. So in this case, I look at that and say, okay, I can take one action from over here, which is building this wall over here, and then I can additionally move this piece up one, or I can uh, spin and a worker to move it up two spaces. Uh, on this board over here uh, is going to basically give you specific um, things you can gain when the wall is completed. But uh, anyway, so if you also, the other option is if instead of playing higher than, you can play lower than. So I could play this four and the five. If that's the case, I can simply just switch them out in my hand. And if I do that, I can, oh sorry, switch them out and put this into my discard pile, face down. And if I do that, I don't get to take the actions. However, if I switch them out, uh, I can choose to, uh, so I hide, hide this card, I can choose to uh, discard an additional card in which that will give me the actions I, I wanted to do, just like I was showing you previously, or I can discard two workers from my pool and put it into my supply. So it's going to be have a, basically have a cost for any time you play something that is lower than the card that was previously there. Um, so that, that that's that. So you can either choose to A, higher than, which is uh, that you do the actions, lower than, which is going to make you either discard a card or two workers to do the actions, or you can simply just switch the cards out. When you do that, that's going to end your turn, and it'll pass to the next player, and they'll get the opportunity. Once everybody runs out of cards, some may have more than others, the round will end. And when the round ends, uh, you're going to then go ahead and check your hand of cards, uh, your discard pile of cards, I should say, and see how many of them match uh, that those die. And in this case, I have, there's two fours and a nine. I have one four, so both these fours would activate, and I'd get two workers. So you're going to gain workers that way as bonuses. Then you're going to go ahead and check to see who has the most of those cards that match, and you're going to give them three victory points on this track over here. This is the entire victory point track, as well as moving their character up on this little track to meet the Emperor. Uh, the final thing is you're going to have every boat that is over here move. And then you're going to rinse and repeat four times, moving this marker over and continuing. So let's talk about the spaces now. First of all, up here, whenever you place uh, uh, something up here that's higher than, or you do the discarding action or the worker action, you can then place any of your guys on the space, and uh, you're able to move them. And when you move them, you're going to be able to gain one of these different things, whether it be a worker, whether it be taking a card from your discard to your hand, whether it be moving your guy up on this track here, whether it be gaining two victory points, so on and so forth. And these, of course, get refilled. If your guy is already on the board, you're going to have to move it based on these movement restrictions, as well as if there's nothing there or there's somebody blocking an area, you can move past that area so you're able to go to a new location. Um, that being said, over here is the wall action. If you place a card here, you can place one worker on this wall, or you can discard a worker into your supply to put two workers on the wall. When this fills up in a one to two player game or a three player game, the person who has the most workers there is gonna gain three victory points and move the guy up the wall. Then anybody can take this action over here, which is gonna be this here. So we'll talk about this next. Over here, whenever you put a card here, you obviously can move it up on this board here. In addition, you can discard a worker and move it up two spaces on the board. If you're already up on the board, say seven spaces, and somebody performed that wall action and completed that, everybody has an opportunity to spend these. So for instance, I could spend seven and go down to zero again, in which case I'd then be able to gain a free jade. Uh, so that, that's how you can gain that. This also represents ties in the game. Whoever has the highest, whoever is the farthest along on the track, is going to be the one that breaks ties. So if there was, the, let's say there was four uh, pink and four red, and pink was right here, pink would break the tie and pink would gain the victory points and move the guy up. Next over here, 
Over here, when you switch it out, you're going to be able to move your character one space on this track here, or if you spend two workers, you can move it two spaces and move uh, one of your little jades and little tokens over here up one influence track. Uh, this track is important to go up, up throughout the game because when you get to the end here, if you're the first, you get seven points, second, third, uh, five points, third, you get three. And if you don't make it to the end here, you're going to lose the game at the end of the fourth round, regardless of how many uh, victory points you have, because if the emperor doesn't see you, then it's irrelevant. Additionally, whenever you go past this space here, you're going to get an additional victory point in the game. Over here is the jade. When you switch it out for here, you can spend uh, workers to gain jade. You can only gain one when you switch these cards out. And in addition, uh, if these pools are out, you can only spend three. If these are out, you can only spend four. And if these are out, you can only spend five. I mean, you could technically, if you wanted to spend, uh, you could, if these are all here, you could spend five to gain one of these, but that's not cost effective. You always want to go for the lowest. But if these are all out, obviously go for the pool. Over here is interesting. There's three spaces, okay? There's this one, which ha happens for end-of-game scoring. So, for instance, this one says you get two points for each ship with a, a worker on it. Uh, this one over here says you get uh, one, uh, three points for every so on and so forth, and you get a maximum of ten points. Regardless, these are ways you can get points at the end of the game, end-of-the-game bo bonus scoring. And over here is going to be things that happen throughout the game, whether it be you can place cards equal to the numbers as opposed to um, higher than. It can be higher than and equal. Uh, and over here is going to be the daytime phase. What happens in the daytime phase, you get to move your guy up or you get to move this token up. And the way that works is you switch a card out that's higher than, of course. And then you spend the currency plus the amount of currency equal to the number of workers in this pool over here. So right now it would just cost you three workers. And you could just put three, get rid of three, and put one. And then you get to put this, this there. But if there's already one here and you are white, for instance, you'd have to spend four workers to place it there. If all of them are filled, then you have no opportunity to get that specific thing at the end of the game or, of course, throughout the game. So these are going to cost more as the game goes on, very, very likely. And then uh, finally, this one over here. This one's interesting. It's when you switch out uh, one of the cards here that's equal than, that's higher than. You're going to get to put a boat on the board. When you put a boat on the board, uh, you're able to then uh, it'll, it, you can then put a worker on that as well. So we'll just go ahead and pick one of these workers here. And then you can move it a space if you want. It's optional. Additionally, if you have three workers on the boat, because another action could be to just spend one worker to put two workers on a boat, when it gets to a specific space, whether it be by the end of the round or by this movement action, you can discard the boat and the workers to gain four victory points or an additional card from the additional uh, card deck. They're all random. They give you specific things. Sometimes they're, they're good, but basically additional actions. The final one over here is if you discard the boat and the workers, you're able to gain this little piece here. And this piece is a double worker piece, which will allow you to utilize it in certain er certain ways. Like you can put it here, and that is gonna count uh, as one worker, but it fills up two slots. This could also involve uh, when you discard it for two workers for certain things, you're gonna be able to utilize it. Uh, if you need to discard three workers, you can discard this as two. And whenever you gain workers, this only counts as one gaining it. So pretty, pretty useful if you ask me. There's slots on your board that fill up when you gain these bonuses. So for instance, you can only get one uh, bonus worker because only one cube fits in that area. You can gain two bonus cards because two fit there and you can gain about three or four bonus uh, points of, of four. And that's the basic idea of the game. You're gonna go throughout all four rounds, gaining workers and uh, rinsing and repeating and whoever has the most points at the end of the game, including any, any bonus points and whatnot, is gonna win provided they're up here at the, victor at the victory area, the place in which you're gonna be meeting the emperor. And Overall, that is how you play the game Gugong. I hope I explained it well enough. Let's come up and talk about it. All right, you knew it was coming. I've got caveats. And the first one is if your boat flies off the edge of the, of the world, basically that river, if it goes past that river and you've got guys on a river, you lose it if it, it falls off the edge of the world. So that can happen. It's not very likely, but it can. Additionally, when you finish that wall action, only the player who has the majority takes their workers off. Everybody else leaves theirs on. And then everybody that was on that wall is then able to utilize that influence uh, spending aspect. You can't, if, if white was never on the wall, white and white had eight influence on that little track there. He's not able to spend that because he wasn't on the wall. Uh, otherwise, I think I pretty much got everything. And that's not so bad for a game that's got a lot, and I mean a lot, going for it. Gugong. I hope I say this name right. I don't even know, but this game is really, really beautiful. It is really, really fun, and it has a great theme. I love feeling like I have to get to that emperor, getting moving across that track uh, to visit him. Um, 
and that is more important than anything else in the game. So at the end of the game, I start going, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like 10 points ahead, I'm fine. But then you realize you've got to take two or three actions just to make sure that you get to the end because you didn't specifically focus on that. Or maybe you got to send out your, your, your riders and they have to go around collecting specific actions that you need that you can't get anywhere else. The boat is very useful because it gives you additional cards in your hand, which count for additional workers. Uh, the space on the side of that that has the daytime actions, the end of game scoring, as well as the... Uh, of these little things that you do, like this one, lets you equal to or greater than as opposed to just greater than. That's so key, so good. I love it. Uh, getting the jade too is a separate thing all on its own. If you're gonna be a jade farmer, you can farm all that jade to get a bunch of victory points at the end of the game. Because at the end of the game, it tells you how you're gonna be scoring. Of course, you're gonna have a certain amount of points already throughout the game. But uh, based on your max amount of like things on the wall, you're gonna score that one more time. So gain three points as well as moving your guy up. Then you're going to score. I mean, it tells you all the different ways you're gonna score on here. You have to just look on the board and it'll go, oh, that's. This is one way you can do it. Oh, you're going to score that, that bonus victory points there. This is the Emperor that you're going to score, and then you're going to score the additional Jade. So there's four additional ways to gain victory points at the end of the game. These boards are awesome. I love the fact that you're going to be putting your Rider pieces. They give you additional actions, and then you can even trade them in for more stuff. Over here, it tells you exactly how many pieces, how many things you can get as bonuses, but it costs you workers, and that means you can't utilize them the rest of the game, so you have to be careful how you want to utilize these, because, yeah, more cards means more time to gain workers, and do different things but then if you don't have any workers to aid you it's not going to help you as much so it's a lot of pull a lot of push in this game and uh with the two sides of the board that's great because it gives you exactly what you need regardless of what side you're playing on it feels different every time because when you're playing the game these little pieces that give you end of game scoring and whatnot there's a multitude of them and they switch around which for a game like this that has so much massive choice anyway that is a nice added touch along with of course the writers that fill in and the board is always different for the writers because they're going to be moving around sometimes it has a great like path that you can take to gain a bunch of bonus actions and sometimes you're going to be stuck with things that you don't need whether it is like maybe you don't have three workers to get that one jade that can be kind of an issue um but overall the game's fun I really, really like these style games. It's a thick Euro, but it has a lot going for it. It doesn't feel extremely long when you're playing the game. It's hard to learn when you're reading the rules because there's so much going on, but hopefully with this video, it gave you enough to understand pretty much how to play completely so you don't have to actually go in and look through all that. I did the work for you. You are welcome. Uh, overall, this game is really fun. Artwork, quality of all the components, all the chits, all the pieces feel great. Uh, the setup is very easy. Understanding how the turns work is great because it's on your board and explain to you. Now after playing um, just a couple times, I'm now able to go through and look at each of the sections and tell you what they do and how they function. Even though there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen phases in the game, including four bonus phases at the end. It's very, very self-explanatory, as well as the board. Everything on the board has symbols to explain how they function and how they work, which is excellent. This does remind me kind of like Francis Drake, where once you learn it, it gets a little easier and easier as you play it. Francis Drake is definitely easier and it looks more daunting. This one looks daunting and it can be a little daunting. So for those of you out there who don't like a huge amount of strategy or a thick Euro, a thick worker placement style game, it's probably not going to be for you, honestly. If you're sitting there going, I can't I can't keep track of all this stuff. You might not be able to. I don't I don't know. It really just depends on you as a gamer. But for me, it's very, very simple now that I've gotten it down. I understand all the different workings and whatnot. After you play one or two games, even the people who are more like nervous about it, you'll still get it down if you really want to. Solid, solid game. This game gets my seal of approval. Definitely, definitely check out Google in the description below.